All right. Yeah, am I always catching me off guard? This is a song called Calvary. And uh, pick it up the best way you can. Calvary. 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 Calvary, Lord. Surely who he died on. Calvary. Can you hear him calling his father? Can't you hear God? Can't you hear God calling, calling his father? Surely he died on Look at it. For Look at Jesus hanging there. Calvary. Calvary. Lord, I see you on Calvary. died for me on Actually, this week. Yes, it is. It's during this time. Yes. And on Friday night Hallelujah. of this week, yes. they crucified That's it. That's it. my Lord on the cross. I really want you to look. I don't have to talk about a particular verse this morning because you already know about the resurrection of Christ, but always read the book of Matthew, and you can read that on your own. All you got to do is read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you'll hear all of them talking about the resurrection 
of Jesus Christ. And I want to talk about why the grave couldn't hold Jesus. Why the grave couldn't hold Jesus. Now I need to say the greatest thing about Christ coming to this world of course, the crucifixion said, <laughs> great revelation just came to me. The crucifixion satisfied the Father. But the resurrection satisfied us. Jesus needed to pay the price to please the Father. And that was hanging on the cross, sharing his blood, because blood is the best thing in your body. And God demanded the best in you for the payment of sin. So you got to understand why God the Father wanted blood, and the blood is what satisfied the Father. But what if Jesus died on the cross and they buried and that was it? It wouldn't have helped us. It, oh, it would have satisfied the father. The father had no problem about him getting up because he was God. But when he got up Sunday morning, that satisfied me. You know why? I don't need a dead Christ. A dead Christ on a cross can't save me. But when the greatest thing for us is that Sunday morning, yes, yes. not Friday night. Yes, Amen. Yes, and you know what? That's what put Jesus over all leaders, all theologians, all philosophers, all of them. Yes. I've been to certain countries and seen other tombs of people. But you know what? You go to the tomb of Buddha, he's still there. You go to the tomb of Muhammad, he's still there. You go to the tomb of all Socrates and all of the philosophical minds, Emmanuel Kant, I could go on down the list, but that's not necessary. But all these people that you worship and you go look for them, you go to their tomb, they're still there. But what makes Jesus' death and burial so significant is when you go there, he's not there. You won't find nothing but an empty tomb. All right, go look for Confucius. Go look for Buddha. Go look for Muhammad. The, all these great religions of the world, they bear it. But when you go to the tomb of Christ, it's an empty tomb. And what is this all about? What, why I'm a Christian and why the rest of you ought to be a Christian is that he got up. That, that, that's, the tea to, that's the key. All the rest of them are still there. But you don't have to worry about God. He got up. And it's a sign that if he got up, look at somebody and say, you can get up. I don't care how down you might be. I don't care how dispirited you may be. You may have walked in here this morning and said, oh, if people knew how I felt. You may walk in here this morning and say, you have no idea what I've been going through. And somebody might ask you, how are you doing this morning? You might say, well, I don't feel so well. I'm a little down. But you ought to tell them this morning, don't feel down. You can get up. And Jesus got up so you can get up. You can get up from my, out of your past. I don't care what people know about you and how they try to hold something on you and try to talk about your past. All you got to look at them and say, I serve a God that got up. And I'm getting up out of whatever it is. I'm coming out of whatever I'm going through because the God that I serve came out. 
And since Jesus came out of a tomb, you can come out of your situation. Don't let the devil keep you down. You can get up this morning. I mean, if it's anything can hold you back, it's you. You can say, well, I plead the blood of Jesus. Turn, some, turn to somebody and say, I got up on a Sunday morning. <laughs> now, it may have been Friday or Thursday when you got up, but it's still your Sunday morning. I got up from drugs. I got up from enemies. I got up from being down. I got up from everything people said about me. I, tried, I pulled. I didn't put. I just got up. And that's why I'm in church this morning. I got up. Some folk not here this morning because they can't get up. <laughs> Still in the bed. <laughs> My God. Now, the fact that the grave could not hold Jesus, listen to this. That grave couldn't hold Jesus because of the great I am. The great I am. See, we, when we look at Jesus getting up out of the grave, we forget he didn't just get up, but he got up because of the great I am. And that go all the way back to Moses at the burning bush. When Moses was talking, God was talking to Moses, and, and Moses said, well, who are you? How should I go before Pharaoh, and what shall your name be? Watch me now. And what did God tell Moses to tell Pharaoh? I am that I am. I, I don't have no specific name. I am what I want to be when I want to be. If you need bread, I'm that. If you need water, I'm that. If you need a way maker, I'm that. Don't try to pin me down with no one name. I am that I am. And that was all Moses had to go down before Pharaoh is I am. And you can make it this morning because of the I am. Do you know what that I am, Jesus? When Jesus, when God said I am, that's the same thing that Jesus is saying on Sunday morning. I am is still waking me up. I am is what raised me up. What you mean when you say I am? If you need water, I'm that. If you need bread, I'm that. If you need a deliverer, I'm that. If you need a mother, I'm that. If you need a father, I'm that. I am what I want to be. So because I am, I am the resurrection. I am the way. I am the truth. I'm the light. I am is why he got up that morning. He said, I am the resurrection. Because I am, the grave couldn't hold it. So Jesus got up that morning because of the great I am. You ought to just look in the Bible sometime and hear what God says I am. I am the light of the world. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. Think about that. With that kind of I am, no grave can hold you. I'm trying to tie this in with your grave situation. Did you see where I'm going? So while you in your grave situation, when you in your graveyard of life, when there's deadness all around you and look like there's no way you're going to come out, you need to repeat to yourself on a morning when the devil is after you is that I am a child of God. And you can't hold me down, Satan, because of who I am. I'm a believer. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, you know, another reason why that grave couldn't hold Jesus down, because you got to remember, Jesus is God. And he was around before death came around. Think about this. Who made death? God. Long before, who was the first one to bring death in existence? God. And Jesus is God, the Holy Ghost is God, and God the God is God. They're all three made one. When we first hear about death, 
Who the first one brought it up? Who brought up death from the beginning? God. He told Adam, the day you eat this fruit, he put a Baptist hoop on it and said, surely. I'm sure, I'm sure if I was preachers or some preachers, I said, God was the first one to hoop. Surely! <laughs> you know, pastor can be crazy. God said, the day you eat this fruit, you will surely die. My God, that's something for preaching now. You go like you got a hoop on there, got a surely. Amen. He said, the day you eat of this fruit, Adam, you will surely die. Who brought up death? God. Who activated that? Who created death? God made death. He had to make it. He the only one brought up the name. Jesus was standing right there. And the Holy Ghost were right there. When they told Adam, you eat, you will die. Now how can the grave hold him when he made it? How can the grave hold the God who created death? How can the grave keep him down where he the one activated death and gave that power to be dead? God made him and God can stop it. Well, you all listen. I, I, I'm preaching a little bit this morning. You don't have to tell nobody, but look at somebody Reverend preaching now. <laughs> Bringing out some shocking revelation. I wrote down this morning while I'm babysitting. <laughs> they have Kaylee back there. Won't be still. Maybe I'm getting them too many vitamins. So let me tell you something. There's something else why that grave couldn't hold Jesus down. He has a history of dealing with death and breaking up funerals. Now, you got to know the Bible to know where I'm going now. How in the world can death hold down this man when he's got a history of conquering death and breaking up funerals? How can a funeral keep him down when he known for breaking up a funeral? You all got to know somebody. He broke up a funeral when they were about to bury a young boy. And Jesus broke up that funeral. And he woke up and saw the two best people in the world, his mama and Jesus. He broke up a funeral. There was a time when a man had a sick girl. Jairus had a sick daughter. She was dying of a fever. And he went to Jesus and said, Lord, come lay your hands on my daughter. Acts chapter 5. I mean, Matthew, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Come lay your hands on my daughter. And Jesus said, don't worry about your daughter. Only believe. And guess what happened? Somebody came back and said, don't worry, the master. Your daughter just died. But Jesus said, don't worry about it. Only believe. Well, they said, don't worry, Jesus, now. Just, just, just let it go, Jairus. She just died. And what did that mean to Jesus? Jesus said, let's go. Only believe. And when the Bible, for those who don't believe in laying on the hands, he said, come lay your hands on my daughter. It's in the Bible. And Jesus went on over there, and the girl was dead. And all he had to do was say, get up! And the young girl got up out of her deathbed. And can you see how could death hold him down when he known for conquering death and bringing up funeral possessions? Want some more on this? How can death hold him down when it couldn't even hold out Lazarus? Help me hold the ghost. And he been dead four days. Days didn't mean nothing with Jesus. Now he could bring a man from the grave from four days I know he could get up on three days. Lord, help me this morning. Help me hold the ghost. And Jesus, when he went down, he, he said, 
They said, you know, his body is stinking, Jesus. Jesus said, just roll away the stone. And you know, even before that, he told them to roll the stone away when he could have rolled it away himself. He didn't have to. He could have said, Lazarus, come on out, and Lazarus came right through the rock. But God wants you to do something. You got to do something on your own. When you want a breakthrough, you got to pray. When you want a breakthrough, you got to fast. When you want a breakthrough, you got to pray. So Jesus said, you roll away the stone. If you do your part, I'll do my part. And they roll the stone away and they say, loose that man. Let him go. Take off the grave clothes of Lazarus. Let him go. And guess what? If he could raise a dead man four days, don't you know no grave surely couldn't hold him three days? Couldn't have held him one day. Couldn't have held him the same night they crucified him. Jesus could have just come right down off the cross after he said it's finished. But that wasn't going to be enough. That Sunday morning, see, it needs to be authenticated. And I don't have time to get on the number three. But it wouldn't have been enough to just come down off the cross after they killed him. It's a greater miracle when you die and come back. Watch that. Now, if I, if I died today, and uh, you all buried me the next day, and I showed up Sunday morning, first of all, half of you going to run out of here. Caleb, you go run out of here. <laughs> I can't even play it, amen. <laughs> I will scare you to death. I will hit national news. Everybody, when we come here to see Jesus, come, let me see. Can you imagine? But you see, that's getting popular. God wasn't about trying to be popular. God was trying about fulfilling the prophecy. God was about letting it, letting it sink on in. How in the world can you be buried three days and come back? Because if he had just come down, they would have said he wasn't dead from the beginning. But when he said that three days, they knew he was dead. They buried him in a tomb. God said I got to stay there for three days because I'm not out now. I'm finna roll out. He had to overcome death to show people he's a conqueror of death. Another reason why the graves couldn't hold Jesus. I like this. The grave was a rock. Now, there was a reason why they didn't bury you in the ground. It's old historic thought that uh, the Egyptians and others, many other countries and people of world religion believe when you put a body in the ground, it contaminated the earth. And so they felt that uh, you shouldn't put it in the ground, put it in a tomb so that it won't contaminate the earth. So they always had people, they buried in tombs and not in the ground. And that's another other religion. Uh, that kind of spill over into uh, Judaism. But when they put him in the tomb, some people said he was never dead from the beginning. Uh, it's called a swoon theory, that he just swooned and that he came back. He was just uh, unconscious and just came back again. Now, oh, I don't have time to get into all the different the theologies about uh, different ideologies about why Jesus came back to the, from the grave, but it was to make sure he was really dead. To make sure that you understood a dead man was God. But this what here's what got me. They put him in a rock, and they had no idea when you put Jesus in a rock, he's more powerful there. Why, Fleming? Because he's a God who handles rocks. He, he taught rock talk. All the while Jesus was here, he kept talking about the rock. He talked about builders and one on sand and one building on a rock. And then he told Peter, upon this rock, 
I build my church. He, he was a rock talking God. And he's telling you, if you really want to be something, he said to Peter, up on this rock, I build my church. He talked about rocks all the time. And you got to understand, rocks are really uh, the crusty part of the earth. They're going down to certain planets of the world, and all they finding is rocks. And the earth, the earth ain't nothing but one big rock. So God mastered rocks. So how can a rock hold down the rock of ages? How can a rock hold out a rock in a weary land? Oh, help me. How can a rock hold down Jesus? So the grave couldn't hold him because it was a rock. And then finally, that, 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 that's another reason why Jesus, the grave could not hold Jesus. Because God wanted to leave some evidence in the tomb. Now let me explain what that means. When Jesus got up, wow, I just thought about it. He showed neatness too. Now that been some of us getting up out of the tomb. The garment would have been lying there all wrinkled up. Like some of you all keep your house. Amen. I must have hit something there. Gonna fall out of your head. Well, now don't fold nothing. Go in the house, all things all thrown in the bed. So you know what that means? Messy. <laughs> I get too many. Hey, Amen. Look, when you like a messy house, is a sign of a messy, confused person. God is a God of order. When you wake up and you keep that, you go home to a messy house, you don't feel right. And when you leave a messy house, you still don't feel right. Because you, it's about confusion. And the aunt demon love messy, dark, dingy places. That's why I always let light in my house when I get up. Demon love. When people depressed, they don't want no light. Have you noticed when you're in a state of depression, you want the house dark? Do you know why? That's what demon love. Demon love darkness. Demon love depression. Demon love stuff out of order. God is a God of order. God is a God of light. He said, let there be light, not darkness. Darkness is evil. When a, young, when a person on drugs, they don't like light. Amen. Some of y'all need to say, I remember that. Amen. You didn't want no light. You want to stay in that dark room and, and stay all in depression. When somebody let the light, oh, cut off. Close the curtain. That's right. Say it right. <laughs> somebody remember those days. But see, what, 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 what brings people, see, light is energy. Darkness drains you of energy. Your eyes need to get light. People don't understand that you need to get out. I've been starting to do it. You need to get 15 minutes of sun every day. That's why Ziggler don't ever get sick. Every time, Ziggler on her lunch break, sitting out there in the front in the sun. Somebody say, I put those seats out there for Ziggler. <laughs> but I started doing it myself. Yo, yo, you get your vitamin D from the light. You fight cancer when you get in the light. You need to just get you some sun. The sun is energy. Google it, since you don't believe me. Don't stay in no house all day long. You need to get some sun. Get out and breathe what God gave us. The devil loves darkness. Hell is a place of darkness. Don't be no light. Heaven is a place of light. Jesus said, I'm not staying in no dark tomb. I'm getting up on a Sunday morning. And I'm getting up early. Early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I had a deacon years ago. He didn't want his wife no more. 
Said the wife got old. And he left his wife. And went and married a young woman. And I said, how's she doing? He said, well, mine was too clean, but this one won't get up at all. <laughs> oh, help the Holy Ghost. Went and married a young one. Went and married a young one. She didn't get up at all. <laughs> but the first one got up too early in the morning. <laughs> Amen. But you know, <laughs> that's funny. But here's the point. When you are getting up early, you're about something. People don't get up early, just don't have nothing to do. The fact that Jesus got up early, he had something to do. What the early bird gets the worm. So when you get up early, he's about something. And he said, I can't stay here when I got other things to do. So the grave couldn't hold him early in the morning. Jesus got up out of that grave. And when Jesus got up, it's all about I told the truth. Finally, I want to say, and when Jesus left the evidence and the folded napkin was right there. Show you how the garment he was in, he folded and put it up neatly to let somebody know that he's a God of order. And then I want to say, Jesus got up out that grave and the grave couldn't hold him because God wanted somebody to be a witness. He got up out of that grave so that I could be a witness. He didn't stay there just for himself. But he got up and said, I'm in control. He got up that morning with all power. I, 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 I love that. When I first came here and preached my first sermon at 24 years old, I walked down those aisles and never heard of a Mount Carmel, never heard of an O.C. Woods. I had a church in Decatur on Howard Street. Faith Tabernacle, and then had a church in Macon, Zion Hill Baptist Church. I didn't want to come to Atlanta. I didn't want to leave Macon. Uh, so I, I came that Sunday morning, and Faith didn't know I was over here. I walked down and sat in the back. That was the pastor's study. And when I walked out and came in this church, and I saw a packed house. I said, oh God, look at the crowd. And I got up that morning and said, my sermon today is power from on high. And somebody happened to have a little cassette recorder and taped it that morning. And you can go on YouTube and look at it. Uh, I weighed about 120 pounds, 24 years old. And when I got up, I said, now look me over. I know I'm little, and I know I'm just a boy to you, but we finna have church in a minute. And when I got cranked up and got on where Fleming wanted to go, uh, they couldn't sit down. They fell all out in the choir. They fell all up there in that choir. They fell all out in the amen corner. They were taking mothers out to church. Deacons were shouting, and they were so powerful until a preacher had to tap me on the shoulder and say, stop for a minute. I had to stop while folk were shouting so hard. And then when I, they toned down, I got up and sang and raised the old hymn, and they shouted some more. And when I came back up to the pulpit, some lady, Margaret and I, when they're hitting on my right song, she started singing, move up a little higher. And I grabbed that song from her, and they shot us some more. <laughs> they just go listen, look at this, listen to it. It's on YouTube. Power from on high. Uh, when I got through, I said, God, send down the power. You know why God said, I got up and said, all power is in my hand. God has said, I need a witness. 
I want somebody to go tell somebody about what has happened Sunday morning. Tell somebody. Are you a witness this morning? Old Fleming feeling all right right now. I don't get happy over here. But every now and then, I want to tell somebody I'm a witness for my Lord. I want to tell the world he's alive. God is not dead. Some years ago, somebody was saying God is dead. When I was a teenager, they put out the rumor God is dead. But then I heard an old preacher say, if God is dead, I want to know who buried him. And if God is dead, how come I'm his child? And they didn't tell me nothing about it. But I come by to tell you this morning, he got up that morning so I could be a witness. God is not dead. Every day I'm telling somebody I love the Lord. He heard my cry. God not dead. God is not dead. The reason I know God is not dead. This morning he touched me with the finger of love. Somebody can tell you I know God is not dead. I was dying out. Couldn't find my way out. I was sick on my bed. Couldn't get up out the bed. But did he touch you? Did he touch you? Somebody can say, I know it's a God. Because where I've been, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the Lord. Oh, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. I feel him in the morning. I feel him in the midnight hour. Oh, I'm a witness. I, I'm trying to stop. I, 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 I know I'm over my time, but I'm a witness. Look, look at somebody and say, we don't have nowhere to go. Yes! I got to tell somebody. Yes! He's alive. Yes! He saved my soul. Yes! Yeah! Somebody can say, you don't know what I've been through. I know it's a God. How many of y'all can raise hands and say, you know you're not supposed to even be here? Somebody say, if you know what I've been through and how I got here today, it's a God somewhere. I, I ain't got nowhere to go but go eat breakfast. Yes! Hallelujah! Yes! Can you say yes? Yes to his will. Yes to his grace. Yes to his power. Yeah! Yeah! Oh! Got a little happy in here. Oh, 
I feel some all down my leg. It's the Holy Ghost. I don't mind being a witness, telling somebody God is alive. Hey, hey. I might have said, uh, Reverend, you going on 74 years old, you ain't supposed to be preaching. Right? Oh my God. <sighs> if, it wasn't, if it just wasn't some of y'all mad, I'd go another, make another round. <laughs> I, can go 30, I can go 30 more minutes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not through, I'm just going to quit. <laughs> you don't get me happy over here. See, I don't have to go, I don't have to go to Wee Street today. Just, I, I just, I just been kind of teaching and talking because I go down there. But this called Women's Month. So the women got it. I said, well, I'm coming home, we... I want to open the door to the church. So if he rose, you can rise. Can't no grave. You all don't know that song. I used to, can't no grave hold my body down. Can't no grave hold my body down. You know, that's a great song. When the first trumpet sound, I'm going to get up out of the ground. Can't no grave hold my body down. You ain't never heard me sing that. That's, that's one of those old hits. You know what? He got up to show us what's going to happen to us. One of these days, there's going to be a great getting up morning. And those who are in their tombs, buried, God's going to bring them back together in that great getting up morning. And you know, I don't, I don't want to get deep in this, but God, every day, I'm just seeing how close we are to the end. Even unbelievers are starting to say they think the world is coming to an end. And war, they, they're scared of another third world war. It's coming. But what keeps bothering me, the evidence, people don't want your money. And how quick the dollar bill is going to lose its value. To so all you all that got money up there, hiding it from the rent in the attic, in the hundred bed, so in the mattress, in the mattress. Let me tell you something. You're going to be pulling that out soon, and they're already saying it. I just went to a restaurant up street on Cameron Road, just opened up. I said, we don't take no money. I said, well, how you expect me to pay for it? Well, you got your phone, put it on this scanner. I said, I don't, what if I don't have a phone? Well, bad look. I said, you don't want my money, we don't take cash. And think about it, it's a good thing. You can't rob nobody. Some restaurants in the ghetto area, they're glad of that because they rob you when you got money. So when you don't have no money, who can rob you? All you got to do is pull out your card. Or, but look, it's going to soon move to your hand. Just like the Bible said, you're going to have a mark on your hand or forehead. And you're witnessing it with the scanner now that the Bible said you won't buy nor sell without the mark of the beast. When I see that everywhere I go, and now it's getting much, much more famous, just put out your credit card. Now you don't have to have no money. I was sending my son something the other day, and I really was really thinking them out the day out for breakfast for his birthday. But you know what? I sent him up somewhere to get something. He said, Dad, you don't give me no money. I said, why? Just send him my cash app. See how quick 
And then I said something to the cash out. And then I said, bring me something to eat. But Dad, they don't have my. I said, that's all right. I'm going to cash out. You, you go get it. Uh, in about 15 minutes, he was at the house. Don't you see that soon you won't need money? What is that telling you what the Bible said? In the last day, you won't buy nor sell without a mark. And now it's easy access to put it on your finger and put it through a scandal. And buy whatever. That's good. That's a very good system. Can't rob you now. Get those few dollars. Go on with it. Want some more? Because soon, wherever they go, they're not going to want the dollar. God is designing it so we're going to be forced to do what he wants. And when that man come along, he's going to tell you, you won't buy enough sale without a mark. And my friend, what if you want grocery and your family hungry? He's going to say, if you don't take my mark, you starve to death. The Antichrist. He needs the mark, not God. God has designed it so you're going to be forced to either take the mark or starve to death. Or you won't be able to buy no grocery. If you don't take the Antichrist mark. Can't you see? And scientists are very disturbed. If you think of lying, why is the Euphrates River drying up? And the Bible predicted the Euphrates River would dry up in the last day. And now we're witnessing it. It's drying up. One of the biggest rivers in the world. But the Bible declare in Revelation... God's going to release from that Euphrates down under that ground some angels so devastatingly evil. They're going to wipe out a half of a third of the earth. And that's where God, I believe, got those demons right down under that Euphrates river. And scientists are saying they hear some strange noises screaming like creatures. They got scared when they went to digging deep and hearing these noises on the Euphrates River. That's where those demons God got down there are going to be turned loose. And once they come loose, they'll wipe out half of civilization. They're so powerful and so filthy. Now you know why the Euphrates River is drying up right in front of your eyes. Google it. God, are you ready for Jesus' return? Somebody said, two men running for president, both of them old. You know what? It's going to get like that where we can't decide on what. And then you're going to have a world war going on. Somebody got to come in the name of peace before we destroy the world with nuclear weapons. And that one somebody, everybody going to listen to it. He's going to come, peace, peace, peace. Let's don't kill each other. What? Well, I got a plan. And guess what's going to happen? In Jerusalem, which is the center of everything right now, Israel. And that's where he's going to make, declare peace, stop the war. And they're going to look up and say, I'm just a man of peace. And once they sign that covenant, between the Arabs and the Jews in the world for seven years and it's going to be peace then he's going to go right over there in Jerusalem in front of the temple and say I'm God fall down and worship me and the Jews are going to say oh no no he breaks his promise in three and a half years then he start persecuting who? the Jews Why the Jews? Israel is God's time clock. Why are we in a war now? Israel is the beginning. It's going to start there and end there. And when he declared himself as God, and the Jews said, no, 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 no. Who is going after? The Jews. And he's going to every Christian who won't take his mark. And you will be beheaded or starved to death. And after he breaks that promise 
and he's about to wipe out the Jews again. They run to Petra, the Jews, and I've been there and seen it, rocky area. They're going to run there to hide. And when he's almost the Antichrist, about to wipe them out, somebody cracked the sky, coming down. Eyes like balls of fire, feet like potter's breast, hair like lamb wood. And the saints will be with him on Mount Olive. And he'll open his mouth and he'll come out like a two-edged sword and wipe out the armies of the world and the Antichrist. And then somebody said there'll be peace in the valley for you and for me. That's when the end, when the same Jesus that rose is going to come back. And when the Jews see him and the world see him, they're going to say, who are you? Guess what he's going to do? He's going to hold out his hand and you're going to see where they pierced him. He's going to say, look at my feet. They'll see where they nailed him. Then he's going to pull back his gum. And they're going to see where they pierced him in the side. And then the Jews who don't believe in Jesus are going to say, oh, you are the Messiah. And the Bible says, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord. And then there'll be peace for a thousand years. And after a thousand years, the God going to let the devil loose again. And that's going to be the final time that he'll put the dragon, the devil, in the lake of fire and the Antichrist. Are you ready for Jesus? He got up, but he's coming back. Are you, are you seeing that the Lord is about to return? If I were you, I will give myself to the Lord. I'm so glad I can put everything behind me and doing what's right. And you're going to have to make up in your mind and straighten up and get right. And get yourself right with God. So you can go home and sleep right. So you can go home and get peace knowing that I'm ready for you, Lord, when you return. You can make that fine decision. See, you know, Reverend, I've been going to church, but I haven't really given my heart to God. You can walk down here right now. You know, you can just come back and confess again. I haven't been what I should be. If you need that, you don't have to join you already. Remember, just come down and I'll pray for you. And pray that God strengthen you, make you a better person. Because you all look at somebody and say, I don't want to be left behind. And I'm going to hold this floor for the next five minutes. You walk down here for prayer. Come on down. Say, Lord, I want to get stronger. Come down. Come down. Just renew yourself. Say, I'm renewing myself. I'm already in church, but I want to renew my commitment back to God. Because I don't want God to come and I'm not ready. There may be another. You can walk down while I'm in a mood to pray for you. Don't be scared because you know what? When you come out like this, Jesus came out like that and showed up among others to let them know I'll come forth for you. You know, you just got to bring it all to God. Just bring it all to God. Don't worry about who's looking. See, so what I hear my pastors telling me today, I want to recommit myself to God. We ought to have a time of recommitment. And you will say, Lord, I haven't been all I should be. I could have been better. I could be better. I know I can be better. And I want you, Lord, to make me better. I recommit and dedicate my life to you so that I won't worry about when I hear all this mess in the news, I'm saying right on King Jesus. No man can hinder you. Will you stretch your hands toward them? And this is about people who want to get better, who want to become a better Christian. 
and want to live a more peaceful life with God. And if you're watching me over this Facebook or YouTube, you can do the same thing. Just stretch your hand toward your computer, stretch your hand toward your TV, and say, Lord, repeat after me, I want to be better. I want you to make my life better. I confess all my sin. I confess everything I did wrong. And I knew I was wrong. But I'm bringing it before you. You said your grace is sufficient. You said you will forgive. You said you will renew. I don't want to be left behind. I've heard the word today. You got up Sunday morning so that you will be a testimony to the whole world. It's not over until it's over. I plead the blood over my life. I plead healing over my body. I pray deliverance over my body. Touch me, Jesus. Touch my life. Touch my family. Touch my heart. And I give myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen. <clears throat> the devil's mad. And he is angry. And when you start to give, giving yourself to the Lord and get devoted under the anointing, you're going to be attacked. I get attacked all the time. That sign that you're a Christian. He don't want to lose his grip on you. He's going to try to make you feel bad. He's going to try to make you say, you know what? You should go on back out there. Because Satan don't want to lose his grip on you. Now you're growing in grace. Loving church. Thanking God for his grace. Thanking God you're waking up. And look, take your weakness before God. It's not your desire to be weak. You're just human. Welcome to the human family. You know better. Than, nobody else in here is no better than you. All of us been weak. All of us had to come through some things. There's some folks sitting out there don't want to confess it. But they know where they've been. And all of us done wrong. But that's what dying on the cross was for. Your sins. That it can, you got another chance. God will forgive you on kill, but you got to forgive yourself. And don't let shame and guilt control you. Say, hey, I pleaded blood. When you see people out there, they got issues. They've had issues, but they're growing. Don't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Tell you what really works. Get on your knees and pray. I don't mind that friend them standing up, but I dare you to start getting on your knees. I got prayer pillars and I start getting on my knees on, and pray it. And I seen God work. So get on your knees and talk to God and watch to see what's going to happen. God bless you. Go back to your seats. Give God a hand clap. Everybody stand as we dismiss. Oh, Lord, dismiss us from this thou place. Help us to see the importance of the resurrection. And as we leave this place, we will go out with victory. Satan is defeated. God stands supreme. Lead us and guide us when we leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Just touch somebody with a hand clap or just shake somebody's hand tell them you are a conqueror tell them you are a conqueror